We'll go back live tonight. Uh, if you're on In Focus, and thanks for staying on. Several African, South African political parties have joined the old chorus calling for the reintroduction of capital punishment. And although the death penalty was abolished in 1995 under President Nelson Mandela's administration, opinion polls suggest uh, public support uh, for its reinstatement. Meanwhile, uh, well-documented international research shows that the practice is not an effective deterrent to crime. For more on this discussion, we joined by Zandi. Dilemma Josie, who speaks for the IFP on policing matters, the African Transformation Movement spokesperson, Zama Chona, as well as ANC NEC member, Dr. Matola Mutsecha, who will join us uh, also shortly uh, for the conversation. You can weigh in tonight on uh, this conversation, 072-110-5584. Drop us an X at Newsroom uh, 405. Must we pick and choose whom uh, the human rights should be afforded to? but two, which human rights we want to uphold. And that's the question as far as it comes to dealing with crime. Good evening to you both, and thank you very much for coming on. Capital punishment, 54 countries um, have retained it. 111 completely abolished it. Seven are, are, are partly having it uh, in place. We had it in place in 1652, in 1995, it was abolished. The first question we always ask, I suppose, is, is it ethically permissible? Zama? Thank you so much. Well, uh, let us state as the African Transformation Movement that uh, our revolution is a peace revolution. Uh, but uh, when looking at the the, the the heinous crimes that are committed against society, when looking at the repeated murders that are committed against humanity, when you look at uh, the, the, the dispositioning of those who are perpetrators that seems to be against the peace revolution or the peacefulness and uh, calm within our state, they're constantly uh, disturbing the peace of ordinary South Africans. This then drives us to consider that you would remember that for the for the longest of time we have said harsher sentences yeah. and but for some reason those harsher sentences have not spoken to the clarity of the message so for us as the african transformation movement when we look at this subject we move from one it is an issue of one individual who views his right to be superior than the right of the other and the very same right that they've looked upon, uh, or the same, very same right that they felt the other was not, uh, uh, um, should not be afforded, they would then cry wolf and say they must be then afforded the very same right. So for us as the African Transformation Movement, it is something that we are looking into that we are saying it should not be permissible because we believe that people who repeatedly offend have actually taken a stance of not wanting to coexist with others. Yeah. And that then becomes a problem and the premise from which. This is why when we talk about the introduction of a justice-based death penalty, we are speaking from the perspective of second-time offenders and committers of heinous crimes. Justice-based death penalty. We'll come back to that. Section 11, Zandile, is it a deterrent to fighting crime in the country? Uh, good evening and good evening to all the uh, 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 viewers of uh, Newsroom. Uh, firstly, maybe let, let us uh, look at the challenges that are faced uh, uh, with South Africa currently. Ca South Africa is a crime scene. Uh, 65 women are being raped every day. Uh, 83 to 87 people are being murdered every day, including children. And it's not just um, uh, uh, domestic violence only, but brutal killings where people are just, they, they are just grabbed. They are, they are, uh, 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 there's butleries and there's everything. And when criminals find you in that situation, they don't think twice. They decide to just take your life at that present moment. But as the IFP, what you are saying is that we are not, um, we, we preserve to the constitution that um, everyone has a right to life. That is why we are not calling for a death penalty, but we are calling for a discussion 
for us to open up a discussion with South Africans because we must partner with South Africans. We must be joined by each and every society and every community in this gathering to say, do we really need to let South Africa be in the state of crime scene as it is now? So what you are saying is, let us open up a discussion. Let's discuss this matter and get to the merits of it because we are not saying each and every person will then be be be, be sentenced to death because of uh, they did buckleary or maybe they stabbed someone or any other case. But we need to professionalize the police service. We need to have investigators that will investigate to the core. And even our justice system must be of that nature that we have a, a court, uh, courts that will only be for uh, gender-based violence uh, cases, yeah. uh, murder related to gender-based violence and, and domestic violence. And so that those courts are specialized courts. They are able to deal with those situations. And we have specialized um, uh, investigators who will get to the bottom of everything before we even get to the point where there is a death sentence yeah. that will uh, uh, be 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 ruled in or or anything like that. Because honestly, let's tell the honest truth: uh, murderers out there are walking out free. They get appeals. They get three meals a day. Where while they didn't even think that eleven year old deserves to have a life as well. As much as it is preserved in the Constitution that everyone has a right to, to, to life, uh, that child that is 11, that woman that is 50 years, that is 80 years, that is 35, also has a right to life. Yeah. But now we seem to be more uh, 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 taking care more of criminals instead of yeah. the, the people who are actually being damaged by this. There's no question that people are looking for solutions to overcome the violent crime that we are seeing. And and, and certainly <laughs> there, 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 there is a feeling that the, the perpetrators are not feeling the consequences, as you put it, and one uh, certainly can't argue with that. However, Zama, one professor says, when political parties begin to to call for things like death penalty. It's a, it's a cheap way for those who are politically inclined uh, to, to pretend to their constituency as if they are doing something about crime. You know, it's, it's, it's too easy uh, uh, of a thing to think about as opposed to try and deal with the more harder issues, which Zandile has already uh, alluded to and yourself maybe would have touched on a little bit, that what we are faced with is a criminal justice system that is failing us. Thank you so much. Maybe for us to see this a little bit clearer, the, um, the perpetrator of the crime against Uyinen M. Kwebal was a repeat offender of the same crime, which means that that individual had killed before, went to jail, served time, came back and still perpetrated the same crime again. Now, the argument is there. Because if you remember just before we went, uh, uh, just before we took uh, my fellow panelist, I said, it, it, the, the issue of an individual who is a repeat offender of the same crime. We give a benefit of a doubt that possibly the injustice or the inadequacies of the system may wrongfully, uh, um, uh, um, may wrongfully deal with an individual who is not deserving. But how unlucky are you as an individual that in your lifetime, you will then be charged twice wrongfully for the same crime. Now, this is why, as the African Transformation Movement, we're going to say that if an individual intentionally takes a life of another, has no right to then come and claim that this individual has a right to life. Two, 2018, 2019, there were... 58 murders a day in South Africa. Now, 58 murders, despite the call for harsher sentences, mm. 58 murders, despite uh, uh, measures that have been taken that are truly exhibiting our 
harshness to a certain extent over the issue. And five years later, we're sitting now at 84. Now there's a crisis in this country. 84 body bags as if we are in a war zone. Yeah. It is totally unacceptable. Yeah. So for an individual to come then and say that it is trying to score points maybe, or maybe trying to get the easy way out, it won't be a correct way of denoting the problem that we are faced with. What we are faced with right now is that even with the corrections problem, uh, uh, or program rather, we are not finding what we should be yeah. finding people who would understand that it is wrong to take a life of another. Dr. Matola Mutsecha joining us on the line. Good to have you, sir, and thank you very much for coming on. The drafters of Section 11 of the Constitution wanting to protect the right to life, the dignity, uh, 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 and so on. Did they not think of this suggestion of a justice-based capital punishment could it have missed them that repeat offenders certainly do not deserve a right to life? Uh, should not be afforded that particular right? Uh, the people or political parties who are calling for capital punishment are those that don't understand or know where we come from as a people. Capital punishment is never a deterrent. Uh, what is happening is that the colonial administrations were using it to wipe out the problematic natives and to defend their capitalist uh, system. Now, uh, the democratic government under President Mandela uh, ensured that capital punishment is abolished because it's not achieving what it was meant to be, but to deal with the native. But at the moment, uh, we have an uh, increase in uh, murders, not because uh, there's no capital punishment. It is because of the sick society that was produced by years and years of uh, uh, it, 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 oppression, years and years of uh, brutalization of, uh, of, of people. Now, what we should be looking at are the root causes of the crime rate that we are facing today. It is because we are not addressing the social ills that are the legacy of British colonialism, apartheid colonialism. So murdering people, uh, hanging people, is not uh, going to take us anywhere. What we need to do is to say, have we achieved the type of society that we need? Nelson Mandela said in 1994 that we need the RDP of the soul. And then um, he founded the Moral Regeneration Movement. And all those things are not working simply because we are not addressing the socioeconomic mm. conditions which are degrading, dehumanizing, and reducing people in our, our people into, in, in, into animals. So the solution is not in capital punishment. Mm. The solution is in creating a new society that guarantees a better life for all. Back with our discussion tonight on capital punishment, part of the campaign messages of some parties actually calling for the what they call justice-based capital punishment as part of their campaign promise in dealing with crime. Dr. Matola Mutsekha, Zandi Lemajosi, as well as uh, Zama uh, are joining us, uh, Zama Chona with uh, the ATM uh, on that conversation. Zandile, let me uh, bring you into this uh, conversation. Are you convinced or do you have a suspicion because of the degree and the levels of the crime statistics that you have uh, mentioned that if we were to really sit around the table with uh, the broader society, they would support a, an idea of capital punishment? Uh, and uh, as opposed to what Dr. Matola Mutsaka is saying, that you would have missed what the founding fathers of our democracy would have uh, intended by abolishing this in 1995. 
No, if uh, we were to sit around the table and get the views of um, many South Africans uh, today, I'm definitely sure that 60% uh, would agree with the, the death, sent uh, death sentence coming back. Uh, but as the IFPS, as much as we, we subscribe to the Constitution, and also the forefathers uh, of uh, the ANC, then of the RDP of the soul, uh, when they developed this, uh, it, it speaks of the transform transformation through the constructions and the development of our nation in spirit. It speaks of uh, South Africans who will be driving their political, economic, and social processes. That has not transpired anyway. That has not happened anyway. So we cannot now start one to bring that on board. And I'm happy that Dr. Mutsehe is now today admitting to the failed government of today that the government has failed the people of South Africa. I mean, we wouldn't be having this discussion if the government had taken care of its uh, problems back then. But it, it lured on corruption and uh, keeping people dependent on, on the government instead of taking its problems into hand. So uh, to me, it, it, it hits hard because there are many families today who sit and they don't have their kids at home. There are many families who sit and they don't have their parents at home because of the brutal killings that have happened. And it is very arrogant to say that um, we lack the understanding uh, of where we come from and what has transpired. We know where we come from, but where we are now, are we dealing with a situation? Is the current government dealing with the situation? No, we are not. But as the IFP, we're not saying we impose that the that sentence must, must, must come back. That is why we want all South Africans to take part in this. And they, we should have a discussion about it, an open discussion in all provinces with all South Africans so that we get a view of how South Africans feel about this. Because if you, if you now want to take what happened in the apartheid regime and bring it back here, yeah. it's, it's totally unfair because then we were dealing with apartheid and people, and uh, maybe at that time they were removing people because of uh, um, the, the threat that they brought. But now, what is a woman and a child uh, threatening you with, with their lives, walking on the streets? How are they threatening you as a person who will brutally kill them, rape them, kill them? And Dr. Mutsiro must come to... Uh, maybe to life and, and to what is happening currently in South Africa. And tell us, out of the 65 raped women every day, how many cases are solved of that? Out of the 84 people that are murdered every day, how many cases are solved of that? Even today, we still have a backlog. In solving cases? Of, uh, 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 of finding DNAs and so forth. Yeah. So, we are running a, 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 a state that is a, a, a collapsing. So we are coming up here with ideas to say, how then do we make sure that we bring back uh, uh, order in South Africa? Okay. We make sure that we don't have a lawless country. Okay. Zama, lofty ideas <laughs> is the word that I want to use. RDP of the soul, justice-based capital punishment. Amnesty International says there is no credible evidence that the death penalty deters crime more effectively than a prison term, right? And to back that up, you look at the statistics coming from the Death Penalty Information Center, right? Uh, you've got um, in America, 35% uh, uh, of the people who are being executed, at least in the last 40 years, are black to the point that uh, Dr. Matolo Munsecha is saying that more often than not, those who are going to be the recipient of this are poor black people who are likely to be sentenced to, to death uh, more than the wealthy people. But two, the statistics that you look at up until 2023 in the no-kill, no-crime graph, Venezuela, highest violent crime, there is no death penalty there. South Africa, highest violent crime, there is no death penalty there. 
you would think, okay, there's a relationship there. But look at Japan, lowest violent uh, crime rate, um, uh, uh, and it allows for death penalty. But look at Spain also, lowest violent crime rate, but there's no death penalty there. So there's no relationship that says death penalty certainly re re results in a, a low crime rate. So what are you basing your justice-based capital punishment on? Thank you so much. Let me start there. Uh, the African Transformation Movement in 2019 called for a referendum on the, just, on the introduction of a justice-based death penalty. And I'd like to highlight, we do not want a reintroduction or the coming back of any a death penalty that was declared a crime or that was part of a a regime that was declared a crime against humanity. This is why you hear the language of the African Transformation Movement saying introduction of a justice-based death penalty. And I want to come to the second thing as I'm coming to the basis, or maybe let me just start with it. The African Transformation Movement is, is calling for this not as a deterrent, but as retribution for sins committed against humanity. That is why we are calling for it. There are people who have proven time in and again that they are not willing to coexist with others. They are, this is why we even go specifically on this matter to say heinous crimes, repeat murderers, people who perpetuate cruelty and brutality. And after waking up and, and, and after arising from killing a six year old with a knife that is dripping blood, claim that the constitution affords him an opportunity to actually have a right to life when they have intentionally taken the life of another. Can these heinous crimes be justified by any adequacies of the system? I believe not. The African Transformation Movement believes not. If that was the case, all 60 million of us would be killers in this country. And therefore, it should never be used as a justification, yeah. the issue of the inadequacies of the system yeah. that people will then perpetuate crimes. But what, 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 what are you interested in? Are you interested in addressing violent crime or you just want to deny uh, uh, human rights to, uh, as you put it, repeat offenders of heinous crimes? Very interesting. How are we denying those who are have taken it upon themselves to repeatedly rape and repeatedly limit the lives of others. Let's use the same scale. The same person who you now saying is being denied a right mm. is the same person who has undermined the rights of others. Yeah. So yeah. why is it that the, 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 the denier of the rights of others must be entitled to rights that he has taken from others? Yeah. Let us be... Let, let, let us, when we look at this, be, 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 use the equal measure and standard. This individual uh, who has perpetuated heinous crimes has actually taken a conscious decision. Now note, we say an individual who has intentionally, which means that the court of law will then have to prove intent. And just to allay the fears of people, the African Transformation Movement also says, upon the Supreme Court of Appeals, saying that, you are guilty as charged from the lower courts. We say the state must fund you to the constitutional court because we are not bloodthirsty and blood-sucking individuals who want to uh, persecute innocent people. But when the whole value chain has declared on you that the lower courts have actually taken a decision that is consistent with the uh, intentional taking of a life by a repeat offender, then we say, then we have done all we could to save you, but you have not saved yourself. Yeah. Dr. Mseha, the same measure, the same yardstick we use of denial of rights, of human rights, must be used when we look at um, 65 women who are raped, uh, the thousands who are murdered, the little children who are abducted, mutilated, and their parts cut and, and, and so on and so forth, and say they are also being denied their rights. You know, the focus is completely wrong. We need to know that South Africa is the most unequal uh, society in the world. Why? Because we have not yet addressed 
the uh, legacy of the violent disposition of African people of their land and mineral resources. And uh, the ANC sought to address this in Parliament when all these political parties who have no past, who have no vision, ganged against the ANC to stop it from changing the constitution to lay down the basis for a moral society where resources are shared, where the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment and inequality is addressed. Now, the same parties who didn't want this fundamental change want to use the problem of the death penalty for campaigning because they have no vision of the of the future. The corruption that they attribute to the ANC is actually the manifestation of uh, this sickness of our our society. Retribution, retribution is the uh, philosophy of Netanyahu of eye to eye for an eye. Uh, which is responsible for the war on Gaza, which tended that place uh, the graveyard for women and children. So uh, what we need is to address the RDP of the soul and make sure that uh, the land is shared by all who work on it yeah. to make sure that uh, South Africa's uh, resources are used yeah. to uplift the lives of all our people. Back tonight, Chion in Focus, Zandile Majozi, Zamanchona, and Dr. Matola Mutsekha, my guest uh, tonight. Dr. Mutsekha, let me come back to you. Uh, the RDP, Reconstruction and Development of the Soul. Reconstruction, one would say, would firstly start by consequence, consequence management. And if we have a police and a legal system that is limping, we're certainly not going to get that. You know, uh, the existing socioeconomic conditions which leads to the triple challenge of poverty, unemployment, and inequality, leads the majority of the people into temptation, uh, including the police. The traffic cops uh, are on the roads, the police are in the streets, but hungry because of these uh, inequalities that the system has created. So I'm saying that if you want to deal with the uh, with the, 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 the perpetrators of crime by sentencing them to death. You are dealing with the symptoms, not the root causes. What we need is a fundamental transformation of our society. And we cannot achieve that unless and until we deal with the root causes of uh, that makes South Africa the most unequal society in the world. Zama, eye for an eye is not what we need. Uh, I'm looking forward to a day where um, the, the Dr. Motsekha would stop saying it is the legacy of apartheid and start saying it is the legacy of the 30 years of maladministration, the declaration of a state into a state of paralysis. I'm looking forward to a day where the ANC will start looking at itself at how it has actually devalued the systems of this country and rendered them ineffective that we have found ourselves in this quagmire and this problem. Because it is very easy to transfer the responsibility from the current government and look into a government that was there before time. The truth of the matter is that the government right now is non-functional under whose government? The government right now has been non-functional under whose government? So for us as the African Transformation Movement, it is important for us to say, one, I've raised this issue, I'm going to say it again that we cannot get away with behavior that is not consistent with the laws of this country because we are citing that I was justified because the environment was not conducive. If that is the point of departure, then every individual in this country, and now remember, almost 54% of the citizens of this country are unemployed, expanded definition. Almost 70% of the, of the youth in this country is unemployed, and therefore they must kill and murder. 
uh, remember that when you look at uh, the, 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 the access to services in this country and the number of people who are living in abject poverty, up to 30 million of the citizens are living in abject poverty. And therefore, if we are going to move with this narrative, we then say all 30 million of them and all those who have found themselves languishing in the outskirts of participation, those people are justified to kill. This is why we are saying as the African Transformation Movement, as you move from that disposition, you're moving from a very wrong premise. We are not against the fixing of society, but, but whilst we pursue the ideal, what do we do with repeat offenders, repeat rapists, and individuals who commit heinous crimes? Those people must face the music. And we believe that a referendum on a justice-based death penalty would make way for this society to be able to deal with these challenges. Yeah. Ours is to seek peace, and in order for us to find peace with those who are counter-revolutionary to the message of peace must now take a conscious decision. Do they want to be part of society or do they want to be outside society? So crime figures from countries that have banned the, the, the death penalty have um, uh, not necessarily supported that view. However, Zandile, social reasons for violent crime is what we need to, to address. Dr. Matola Mutsaka is saying part of the challenge, for example, is, is how parties in parliament would have blocked the, the efforts of the ANC to deal with the, with the land issue, which is part of the restoration uh, that, that, that needs to be prioritized. No. <laughs> oh. That, uh, that, that, that line is letting us down. Uh, hopefully, we can we, we we can try and sort that out and 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 get it going right. Doctor Mutsaka, the question is on repeat offenders. Maybe let's 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 address that. Uh, you know, by punishing the victims of uh, the ill society, you are not solving the problem of the society. If there's any need for a referendum, it should be a referendum on whether or not we should not expropriate land without compensation and it is use the resources of the country to fix this society. Yeah. So this campaigning by ATM and their fellow travelers is not taking us anywhere. All they want is to increase their numbers in parliament to continue to block transformation. So you, you are saying repeat offenders are, are also still victims? They are victims of this moral decay that is deepening day by day. So you can wipe out those the repeat offenders. We have not yet solved the problem. The problem is that uh, we need to build a socially cohesive and prosperous uh, society in this country. But that is not achievable without addressing the root causes of the problem. The root causes of the problem is this landlessness uh, that was created by violent disposition of the African majority of their land and natural resources. Yeah, Sandy, I think we have you back. Address that for us. No, thank you very much. Uh, I, I, in fact, I am afraid of the disconnection of uh, Dr. Mtsiche with uh, society uh, or maybe with what has been happening in parliament. I mean, the ANC has had a two-third majority for a while. Now, yes. because um, it is only this term, they have not had it. They have not, all this time, for, for the past, let's say, 25 years, They've never thought of uh, land reform. They've never thought of um, building a society that will do not have any inequalities. They did, they did not think of all those things. Only now uh, those things are coming forth. And uh, because there are parties that uh, do not agree with certain things that they want to change in the constitution, now it is the, 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 the fault of uh, those uh, uh, opposition parties. That is not true. 
He cannot be disconnected to what has been happening. In fact, the ANC should have dealt with the issues uh, that were created by the apartheid regime. Because when you have a challenge, you deal with the challenge and then you move forward so that you find other problems. You can't be moving with the same problem to another problem because you won't be able to be solving uh, uh, many uh, uh, challenges that you face in life. I mean, back then, we had 13% of uh, unemployment. Now, we are at more than 34% of unemployment. What do you call that? Where are we moving to? Because seemingly we are not moving to that. But as the IFP, as much as I'm saying, we are not saying uh, we want... Uh, the death penalty back. No, we are not saying that. We are saying let's open up a discussion, find ways on how to deal with people that are brutally killing, not everyone, not uh, uh, someone who has uh, done um, a minor uh, crime and so forth. We've got things for that. We've got the, the, the purpose of saying in our manifesto, we are saying, decentralize the powers and resources of police to provinces and to cities so that the cities are able to deal with their own cases on its merits, so that provinces are able to take care of their challenges on its merits. So we are not saying everyone who, who, who does crime then must be subjected to that, but it must come back to this thing because we are creating excuses. There are many men and women in blue who are working to get South Africa out of crime. But there are others, as Dr. Mutsere says, that there are others is because of the inequalities that they would go on the streets and want bribes, which means he is agreeing to the fact that you must have politicians that will be corrupt. You must have politicians that will be looting on departments. When black people out there, when the majority that was sidelined back then is still suffering today, we cannot deal with such issues. Let us come to the table, see what is it that we can work out. But the ANC cannot now, start now, bring up an issue of a, a constitution, of which is something they could have yeah. done. They've had a two-third majority for a long time. They could have done that a long time ago. That is no excuse. But it's just a disconnection of the ANC with the societies and communities that people live in. We leave it there for tonight. I appreciate you all. Thank you for coming on. Zama, Zandile, and Dr. Mutsecha for coming on uh, this evening. Here's what you're saying on WhatsApp. 072 Nonele Nkotana saying, Good evening. I support the death penalty because those who rape and murder would not be able to do it twice. There is a shocking rate of convicted criminals reoffending, especially rapists and murderers in South Africa. Anonymous saying, hi, Tabo, Dr. Mutsecha, is unrealistic. We are 30 years post-apartheid. Ordinary citizens cannot wait forever. Women and children are killed in, a very, in very painful ways. Zama is very much on point. The NC is dysfunctional. Your thoughts tonight on that topic? Much appreciated, and thank you for coming through. More news uh, waiting for you on the other side of this break. Stay with us.